What's up guys and welcome to my 2017-18 to Premier League predictions. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new, leave a like and share with your friends. And without any further wait, let's get into the video. So in 20th, I've put Brighton. They just lack like too much Premier League experience. Um, they have got, added some talent to their squad like Sutton and Ryan and some other people like that. Um, but I just don't think they have enough talent or enough depth to compete with other teams in the relegation battle like Huddersfield, Burnley, Swansea, Palace, Watford, etc. Teams like them. And I think they've got the worst squad out of all of them. So that's why I think they're going to finish 20th. In 19th, I've put Huddersfield. They have they have made a lot of sidings because of the money they made from winning the playoffs. But they seem to go for quantity over quality. Like, they've brought a load of guys in, but not many of them have got quality. And they, sort of, all of them basically lack Premier League experience. They've got, like, a few acquisitions that are decent. With, like, Georgensen from Copenhagen or Steve Mooney from um, Montepulier, whatever they're called. But he, he scored a decent amount of goals for them last year, but they, they, they're just in the league good in it, so... You can't really tell how they play in the prem, but I think he'll I think he'll score like seven to eleven goals for them, so they'll he'll do all right. But they have they haven't got a very good squad. Aaron Moy is all right. They've got a permanent deal for him from Man City, but he's not going to be able to carry them all the way himself from the midfield. So again, like Brighton, they lack Premier League experience, and that's why I've put them in nineteenth. In 18th is Burnley. Um, fair play to Sean Dyche for um, keeping him up last year. He did a very good job of it. However, I think they're going to go down next year. And this was a choice for me between three teams, and you'll see the other two coming up soon. And the reason I've gone for Burnley over the other two is because Keane, Michael Keane, he kept them in a lot of games last year. Him and Heaton, especially like the that, that 0-0 draw, I think it was, against Man United, they, they kept them in it so much. And without him, um, I think they're going to struggle like massively in defence. There's no one really to fill that huge void that's been left by him. They have, right, they've got decent attackers with Gray, Vokes, Barnes, and now they've got I think um, Walters from Stoke. And they've had they've got some decent midfielders as well, but I just don't think they're going to be able to stay up again this year. Fair play to Sean Dyche, though, for keeping him up last season. But, unfortunately, Birdie fans, I think you're going down this year. In 17th, and just avoiding the drop is Swansea. Um, Paul Clement, fair play to him. He had to pick up the pieces from Bob Bradley last year, who may be the most appalling manager I've ever seen. Um, and he'll probably hope to improve on last year's campaign. However... With star players like Sigurdsson and Lorente, who basically carried them, like in the attack, because Boy Baston wasn't very much of a help. Um, yeah, they're both links away with moves. Sigurdsson most likely going to Everton. The links for Lorente to Chelsea have gone away a bit, but it could still happen. And even then, they're going to lack um, creativity, and they do have a re- good, decent replacement for Lorente if he does leave, like in Tammy Abraham. But there's no way to transition from that uh, midfield to the attack without Sigurdsson unless they can, like, bring in someone to replace him. But I don't think they're going to be able to, really. So they're going to struggle. But I don't think they're going to get relegated. 16th, I've put Watford. They were probably the most inconsistent team last year, either them or Arsenal, but Watford were bad inconsistent. Arsenal were good sometimes. Um, they've sucked another manager. D- to be honest, he deserved a sack. He couldn't even learn to speak English. And they've brought in Marco Silva, who, to be fair, put a very good relegation up fight, um, relegation fight up with Hull last year. Um, and they have added to their squad with, like, Chalabar, Hughes, etc. And... So, I don't think they're going to be facing relegation, but I don't think they're going to be threatening teams in the higher of the bottom 10, like 12th, 13th, above. But I don't think they're going to be near relegation, if I'm honest. So, yeah. 15th, I've put Palace. Um, Allardyce, amazing last year. Did an amazing job keeping them up. 
but for some weird reason he's left and that's a huge blow to, blow to Palace um sorry um, they've brought in Frank de Boer as a replacement but I don't think he's I don't I've, I've not really seen him managing team so I can't really give an opinion on him Oh, he has done some decent business in the market so far. He's bought in Reader Rolled from Ajax. He's bought in um, the Chelsea youngster Loftus Cheek on loan. So they've 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 got a decent midfield of Kabai, um, Milabubba. I don't know what his name is, and um, Loftus Cheek now. And then they've got Townsend and Zaha on the wing for Benteke up front. That's decent, and their defence is. Quite all right for a mid-table team. Van Anhol, Kelly, I think they have it right back or someone like that. And then they have um, Reed Wold and someone else. Can't remember. Um, but yeah, um, I don't think they'll be facing relegation much like Hull, but I don't think they'll be threatening um, people in the top half of the table. In 14th sits the perhaps most irrelevant, boring and the least cared about team in the Premier League, Stoke City. Like, they're always finishing between, like, 9th and 13th and this year 14th, I think. They're like, the most boring team. No one even knows they're there, really, until they get smashed by someone. Like, when Tottenham beat them 4-0 every season or whatever. Um, um, and this is why I've put them 14th. The main reason, Marco Inaltovic is gone and he basically carried them when Shakiri was out. Shakiri, he's a very good player, but he's not Arnautovic. Like, he's not great. They're both, neither of them are great players. They're pretty average, but compared to the rest of the Stoke squad, they're insane. Um, and without him, they're going to really struggle attacking. They've, they've, they've improved defensively, which is what they really needed last season. They've brought in Kurt Zuma on loan from Chelsea. But... They've improved in defence, but now they're not going to be able to score goals. They still had Arnautovic. I think they'd do all right and finish, like, 11th or 10th. Well, that's not really all right, but it's all right for Stoke. But, yeah. So, that's basically it. On to 13th. And in 13th is where I put the Magpies. Newcastle. They, this is the league where they belong in. They're not meant to be in the Championship. They they walked through the Championship last year with ease. Although Brighton did put up a fight with them, fair play. But they're going to be nowhere near them in the Premier League this season. Newcastle where they belong. They're not going to get relegated again. And they're going to finish 13th, in my opinion. They haven't lost any of their really important players. Like Mitrovic, Dwight Gal, Voldemort, etc. And they, they've strengthened defensively with... Print, I'm sorry if I pronounce this wrong, Le Juan and um, Javier Manquillo from Atletico Madrid. Madrid, yes, I love that. Um, so they're gonna, they're all right defensively and they're all right going forward as well. So this is why they're above Stoke because Stoke can't be able to score goals. So yeah. Now in 12, I've gone with something that not many people have done. They've put them quite high up the table, 8th, 9th. I've seen on most predictions that I've watched. But I'm going to put the Hammers in 12. Um, they were very disappointing last year. Um, they had an h- awful form at home, and they're going to have to improve that this year if they want to get into the top 10 and possibly threaten for Europa League football. But I think they're not going to be able to do that. Um They've taken a step forward. They've got rid of their lackluster players like Arbeloa, Nordweit, Darren Randolph. The mo- like they were they were dreadful. Arbeloa did they even play? I didn't know this. Nordweit came West Ham winning two one against Spurs came on and conceded two goals. Well done. And Randolph is just not good. Um, neither with Adrian to be fair, but now they've brought in Joe Hart, who I don't, I, he's a bit inconsistent and he he can be really bad at times, but. He's a Premier League proven keeper. Um, if they've brought in an Altovic, obviously from Stoke, as I mentioned earlier, which is why they're going to finish above them. And obviously Zabaleta, um, and that's one of the positions on the field they needed to improve, because Sam Bryan and Arbeloa could not play there. That's why they needed to play Fernandez there at right wing back, because they literally didn't have anyone. And obviously they've brought in their marquee signing. 
well, oh, that's what I was class. This is what I would class as their marquee signing. Um, Chicharito, Hernandez, their thirty-first striker in seven years. Can I add? Um, yeah, I think they're going to improve from last year, but I think they're going to get a lot more points than last year. But I don't think they're going to finish that much higher up the table. So, yeah. So, like, this is my opinion. Please don't abuse me. Leave me alone. In the eleventh. And arguably could finish below West Ham, but I honestly don't think they will. Um, I've put West Brom, obviously the masters of the set pieces last year, McCauley, Dawson, etc. Must well just have a team of centre backs that score millions of goals. Um, and he's improved in attack as well by bringing in Jay Rodriguez. Um, and he's he scored on his debut. Well, yeah, I think it was his debut. Um, I'm not sure if it was his second match, but I think I'm pretty sure it was his debut in the Asia Cup against Palace or something. I'm not sure. Um, it was one of them teams. Um, or it might have been Leicester and it might have been Liverpool, but I'm pretty sure it was Palace. Um, yeah, so they're going to be able to go forward with, like, with the likes of Chadley, Felix, Rondon and now Joe Rodriguez. They've got their front four in maybe like a 4 2 3 1. And so I think they're going to be. Um, better but I don't think they're going to finish as high because they finished 10th last season um, and two of the same teams you can tell are going to finish above them I might as well tell you because it's no particular order Bournemouth and Southampton are both going to finish above them but there's one more team who finished below them but I think are going to finish above them and you've probably realised who it is but you'll find out later if you haven't in 10th I've put Southampton um, they had a good campaign again last year well for for their standards obviously they're they're eighth ninth tenth eighth is a good finish for them ninth is a good finish for them tenth is an all right finish for them um but again the big clubs are going to be coming in for their star players obviously they make big money from it but it's massive losses especially if they lose van dyke to liverpool and that's most likely to happen then they're screwed in defense basically when he when he when he went out injured last year, they you could see how far down they went defensively. They they were so much worse. And obviously Ryan Bertrand also linked with a move away. If they lose them both, then they're gonna con- be conceding quite a lot of goals, unless they can find a really good replacement for them both. Obviously, getting sixty million in for Van Van Dijk isn't too bad. They can buy uh, p- both positions really, but I don't think they're gonna be able to get better than him really um but their scouts are magical so they will probably find someone and that'll go on them a top 10 finish again in ninth i've put bournemouth they amazed everyone last year quietly quietly amazing like not many people noticed how well they did but they did very well last year and again i expect them to repeat it with an improvement on um What's his magic? Yeah, Fobe are from the foot in Jermaine Defoe to play next to King. And that, that attack is reasonably scary. The clinicalness of Defoe and the pace of King. I do not want to play against that attack. Also, they've brought in Begovic for the goalkeeper, who's a massive improvement on Boruch. Boruch? Am I said that's a dry? Boruch. That's it. But why can't I pronounce names? I know that. And obviously, they've brought in Nathan Ake on a permanent move from Chelsea. And they're going to, so they're going to be solid defensively, and they're going to be scoring goals going forward. And they could be threatening for European football this year, if I'm honest. So yeah, ninth is Bournemouth. In eighth, and this is the team I was talking about earlier, finishing above West Brom this year, pushing them down. I put Leicester City um, after the dream title win in the 2015 to 16 season. They splashed their well earned cash. Looking for a strike partner to v- for Vardy. And they brought in Slimani. Did very well in the Liga Nos. Is that the league? Yeah, I think it is. And Musa, who was doing bits at Moscow. However, they did not really go to plan. And they were both dreadful, to say the least. They both scored less than five goals in the league, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and obviously, they needed a replacement for N'Golo Kante. Um, we'll get on to him later. Um, and they brought in and plays Mendy, and he didn't really go to plan either. Uh, they started poorly, lost a hole on the opening day, and it just went down downhill for them there, really. 
They sacked Ranieri, and it all looked bad for Leicester. It looked like they were going to be relegated. But they, Craig Shakespeare came in, stepped up for the role. Bought, he brought in Wilfred and Didi, and obviously he's not no Kante, but he seemed to do the job next to Drinkwater. Um, and they avoided relegation with ease. And they had a great run in the Champions League as well. Very unlucky to lose to Atletico, if, if you ask me. Obviously, would have been knocked out for Real Madrid, I assume, in the semis. But fair play to Leicester. Fair play. They did very well. Then, well, they did better than anyone else expected. Even though they did have basically the easiest group ever. Um, yeah. And um, they've brought in Maguire for the defence. Don't really know why. He's quite bad, in my opinion. But maybe, he might be a step up to who for Morgan. I'm not really sure. And Ben Luane seems to be all right as well. So Maguire and Ben Luane maybe. Or maybe who from Ben Luane or or Morgan and Maguire. Sorry if that car bit there. It just ended. Um, Yeah. So who knows what centre-back partnership they're going to be playing. And they've all obviously bought in Sevilla captain. Um, Did I say that right? That sounded a bit weird. Sevilla captain. I meant to say. Abora. And that midfield is solid. Drink water, although he might be on his way out to Chelsea, which I highly doubt. And I will laugh if they sign him because that is not a good signing. Um, yeah, drink water, Abora, and Ndidi. That's quite a decent midfield. And they could be pushing Everton for that seventh place finish, but I don't think they will get it. And this is why. The reason that Leicester will not finish seventh is because. Everton, they did all right last year. I mean, they were expected to finish just outside the top six. Um, they weren't. They weren't going to be pushing anyone in that top six, were they? Um, but they comfortably finished seventh, about like ten points above. I think Southampton, who finished eighth, um, joint points on Bournemouth as well. Um, yeah, they, they they comfortably got seventh. And I think they're going to be pushing into that top six, but I don't think they're going to get into that top six. Maybe instead of about ten points behind Arsenal or something, I'll put it on screen. Um, I think they'll be... Um, Arsenal, did I say Arsenal? I meant to say Man United. Um, I think they'll be three or four points off. Um, obviously, one of their... Some of their positions last year, such as they needed a keeper, they needed a centre-back, they needed a midfielder, and they got all of them things, plus more. They brought in Sandro Ramirez. Obviously, they didn't need to bring in him until they lost Lukaku, but they knew they were going to lose him, so they brought him in. That's an all-right sign. And they're linked with Giroud constantly as well, which would be very good for them, I believe. And obviously, Pickford came in for the keeper for £25 million. Bargain, if you ask me. He's like 22 or whatever. Um, and he was Sunderland's only chance of staying up last year. Obviously, they didn't stay up. They got relegated by a mile. But um, but well, they were a mile off surviving, should I say. But he stood out in that team as well as the foe for me. And obviously, they've brought in Keane. Great for Burnley. Kept them up. Um, Playing next to Williams. Great pairing. Bought in Klaassen from Ajax, who played very well in the Eredivisie last year and also in the Europa League. Um, they bought in Wayne Rooney as well. I think he'll be great for them. With playtime on his day, Rooney is class. Like him, Klaassen and probably Guy or Schneiderlin. That midfield is very good. And obviously, the are linked with Walcott as well, who could be playing on the wings with Sigurdsson, maybe. That they're, they're splashing the cash this summer. I think they'll get Sigurdsson. Doubt they'll get Walcott. But even then, Sigurdsson and Morales or Balassi when he's back, that is that is a very good team. Um, so I think Everton will do well, but not quite pushing into that top six yet. Moving on into sixth place. This is the hardest top six ever to predict. I have no idea how this is going to finish. I can see any of them top six being champions. I can't see any of them missing out on the Champions League, if you ask me. they all. I see them all finishing in the top four, but obviously that's not possible. So I've had to choose two teams that finish outside the top six. Please just allow me, like... Don't get annoyed at me. Like, obviously, you are going to get annoyed at me if you support the two teams that miss out. 
but it's my opinion. I'm trying not to be biased. I don't think I'm being biased. Um, obviously, I'm a Spurs fan. I don't think I'm being biased. I think I'm being genuine enough. Um, and this is genuinely how I'd think it it would finish. Whether I supported Arsenal, whether I supported Man City, whether I supported Tottenham, whether I supported Sunderland. Well, I do support Tottenham. That doesn't really make sense. But, yeah. Um, so, in sixth place, I have put Arsenal. Now, I'm not being biased. Please leave me alone. I just don't think they're, they've improved really, Lacazette, he gets benched by Giroud for the France squad, and I've watched him in pre-season, I mean, he scored a goal on his debut, fair play, but he has missed quite a lot of sitters, he missed one against Bayern, he missed one against another team, I can't remember who it was, but obviously he'll be alright for them, he'll get them 15, 16, 17, 18 goals, goals next season. I don't think he's the 20 plus goal striker that everyone else thinks he is. I genuinely don't. Um, and they've brought in Kalasanak as, as a left back, which really is what they need. Finishing fifth, I've put Liverpool. I originally put them to finish second, and then it found I found that they weren't they they given up getting Kaita, and that's how much I think Kaita could change Liverpool. If they got Liverpool, I'd put them in second. If if they got Kaita, I'd put them in them in second. But they're not going to apparently, so that's why they're in fifth. They've brought in Salah um, to play up front with Firmino and Mane. I do not want to play against their attack next season. Oh, I'm not looking forward to that. Salah and Mane, the pace on the wings. Jesus Christ. And if they keep Patino, which I genuinely think they will, I think Barcelona will probably get Dembele or Griezmann. Probably not Griezmann. I think they'll get Dembele as their winger. Um, And like in a 4-2-3-1 or whatever with Coutinho playing Cam, Firmino, striker and etc., like Henderson and Chant in deep or Lallana or whatever. That is a very good team. I think they'll push in the Champions League this year season. I think they'll get up to maybe sixteen, maybe quarters. Um. Also, they've added, they've got a new left back because Moreno's shit. <laughs> um. Robertson, although I haven't really seen much of him, I don't know about him. And they've brought in Solanke from Chelsea, who looks very promising. I've watched him in pre-season. He scored them a few goals. And I think he'll be a decent sub for the bench with them, obviously. They did have Sturridge and Origi, but Origi sort of plays on the wings now. And Sturridge got injured, scoring a goal against Bayern. So he's probably going to be out for like six months with a fire injury or something. And Solanke could be the man for them, if I'm honest. He could start for them. Like, he won't, but... I don't even think he has the ability to be able to. That's how much I rate him. Obviously, Firmino is better, but I rate him a lot. And I don't think... So, I don't know if they'll get into the top four. I, I think they will, but I've put them outside. Because I can't choose five teams in the top four. Because I think all the top five will finish in the top four, and that's not exactly possible. So, one team had to be sacrificed, and that's Liverpool. Sorry, Liverpool fans. I don't think it's going to be your year. In fourth place, and this is me not being biased, I've put Tottenham Hotspur. Um, obviously, so I've put them above Arsenal and Liverpool out into the top four. And some people call me biased. If I was being biased, I'd put them second or third. Um, and you may notice I said about Liverpool, I wouldn't put them first. And I've said about Tottenham now, I wouldn't put them first. That's because I am 100% sure who's going to finish first. Some of you may disagree, but yeah, that's how life is. Um, Tottenham have yet to make a sign-in. They've obviously let players go and they've let NG go on a permanent. They've let Fazio go on a permanent. That's basically the two major losses and, of course, Carl Walker to City. But we've got 50 million in. We can buy someone like Pereira and we can get some youngsters in, like Foyth or some other youngsters, really. Pochettino's magic in it, so... A bit well with youngsters, so... 
we can probably bring in someone to develop. I don't want Ross Barkley. We're constantly linked with him. I really do not want Ross Barkley. I do not rate him whatsoever. But we don't really need much improvement. If you look at our squad from last season, we need to get rid of Sissoko. That's our number one thing. And Kudu in pre-season looked promising. He needs to play more. Janssen, I think he can improve this season. So with one or two players to come onto the bench... I think we're in for a very good season and another possible title push, but I don't think we're going to be pushing as close as we did for the previous two years because of the three teams above us splashing cash like there's no tomorrow. And we'll move into them right now. In third, I've put Chelsea, last year's champions, but I don't think they'll be able to do it again this year. Jago Costa's going, apparently to Atletico, I do not think Morata is good as Costa. I think Morata will get about as many goals as Lacazette. I think Aguero, Kane, and... Who else was the other one? Crap, I forgot who else I said. Uh -huh. It'll be on screen now. Who did I say would get 20-plus goals? But whatever. Um, oh, Lukaku, duh. Um, yeah, Kane, Aguero, Lukaku, all 20-plus goals. I think Morata... And Lacazette will be lurking on the edge of 20. But I don't think they'll break into that. Because Morata isn't Premier League proven. Lacazette isn't Premier League proven. Um, obviously, they're both, they're both very good in their in their, their leagues. But the Liga and Ligue 1, especially, is not as hard to score in as the Premier League because of the defence is... If, I mean, if you're playing for Kelo Vigo or something in the league, then it is hard to score because you're playing against Ramos, Umtiti, PK, etc. Um, if you don't play for Boston, Madrid or Atletico or Godin, as I should have said, um, then, OK, it's harder to score, but it's nowhere near, to hard to sc to, nowhere near as hard to scoring, should I say, as the Premier League. And I think they'll take a year to get used to it. Maybe next year, or like the, after this season, they might break into the 20 mark. But they need to settle in a bit first, I think. Um, and Hazard misses the start of the season for them as well, which is a massive loss. Um, Bakayo they've got rid of Matic for Bakayoko. I don't know why they've got rid of Matic. He was solid for them. And they've put in Rudiger. Okay, replacement for Terry. Um, and possibly goes in for Cahill with Aspilicueta and Louise. And he's brought in Caballero to replace Begovic, which is probably good deal misses for them. I mean, get 10 million in the bank for Begovic, get Caballero on a free, cheaper wages, I believe. I should assume, I assume so. Um, so that's a good, good bit of business by them. But I don't think they'll finish as high as last year, mainly because of the two teams above them splashing the cash for days, basically. Um, that they, they've spent tons. I mean, Chelsea have spent quite a lot, but nowhere near as much as these two. So that's why I think they'll finish third, especially with the pit players that that these two assign. Um, that especially with the but oh my god, I'm mixing up my words here. Especially with the players these two are buying, that this is going to be one of the most tense title races of all time, especially involving these two teams. So instead of finishing, saying who I think will finish second, I'm going to say who I think will be champion, and then I'll talk about both of them at the same time. So, the champions of the Premier League next season, I believe, will be Manchester United. Now, most people predicted Man City, but... Tracy Mourinho isn't called the special one for no reason. And he always wins the league in the second season. Porto, Madrid, Chelsea, Chelsea again. It's just something that he does. They've needed positions last season. They needed a deep mid midfielder. They went out and got Matic. Great. They needed a centre-back. Got Lindelof. I don't think he'll be settled right away, but I think he'll get used to it. But for the time being, they've got Smalling and Jones and Blind, who can all play in that position, although I do think Blind will be playing left-back, just because Shaw is basically completely out of favour. And Valencia is playing right-back, one of the most solid defences in the league. Obviously, David De Gea protected them in goal. 
and they didn't have a, they did have a goal for of Zlatan, but he did miss quite a lot of chances, and that's why Pogba was not appreciated as much because he was creating them, but they weren't being finished. So now they can have Matic, Herrera, and Pogba has the freedom to go forward, and they've got Matic to hold it, which Fellaini and Herrera couldn't do on their own without help help from Pogba, and they've got. Plenty of options on the wings, Martial, Mkhitaryan, Rashford, Lingard, and they're looking to bring in Perisic, which I think would be a good move for them as well. And obviously Lukaku's up front, finishing them chances from Pogba, came running behind, unlike Zlatan, and he's going to be banging in the goals for Man United, and that is why they're going to win the Premier League. And obviously we go. Um, we, I'm going to talk about City now. I think they're not going to quite go for the title, but I think it's going to be decided by one or two points and I think the whole top four five or six is going to be very tight if I'm honest I mean they've bought um City have bought in some players Edison better than Bravo can save shorts but he looked very shaky with his distri- distribution in pre-season he passed the ball to a Real Madrid player obviously they missed an open goal I don't know who that was but that was dreadful if you watch the match, you will know. Paul and Danilo from Real Madrid, another shaky player. He scored. He that he was. He wasn't known for Lord as Lord Danilo for no reason. He did have some very dodgy performances at Real Madrid. However, he is a good player. Mendy and Walker. Okay, I'll give it to them. They're very good players. Fullbacks covered with Otto Mendy and Company at centre back and Edison in goal. Their defence is almost perfect, but I don't think it's as perfect as Man United's. They haven't bought in a central midfielder, which is, I believe, what they need. I don't think their system quite works with one deep liar, like Torre or Gundogan or Fernandinho, and in two cams with probably David Silva and De Bruyne. I don't think that system is going to work. Not There's too much attack and not enough defence. I think they need another deep liar to play next to Torre or Gundogan or Fernandinho, and then they have De Bruyne at cam, Silva goes onto the bench. And then Sterling can be on the bench as well, in my opinion, with Bernardo Silva, their other new signing, and um, Sane on the other side, and of course Aguero up front. And then they'll have the best bench in the league by far with Silva, Fernandinho, either, either, well, Fernandinho slash Torres slash Gundogan, two of them on the bench, uh, Stones, um, Jesus. Did I say Jesus before? I don't know, and Sterling, I'm not sure if he said it, I think I said him. Um, yeah, so that's that's pretty much the best bench in world football, apart from Real Madrid from last season. Um, but I don't think they'll hit the title because of that midfield issue. If they fix the midfield issue, I might change my predictions. I'm gonna, I'll am i post another one. I think not as in-depth as this. I'll probably just be a video, um, a quick one, saying who I'd swap. But for now, I'm putting City second and Man United to be the champions. So, guys, they are my predictions for the 2017 to 18 Premier League season. Comment what you think down below. Obviously, don't do the whole table, just do like the top six or something. Or you can do the whole table if you want, but I wouldn't recommend it. It'll take ages. But um, yeah, um, that's basically it for this video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, like, share with your friends, and that's it. So. See ya.